Did you put a lock on your heart? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not then reflect on the Qur'an or are there locks upon their hearts? There's an interesting story about a man who had some valuables worth several million dollars in a safe, a really, really strong and secure safe. But he lost the required key with the combination. That key for him would unlock life-changing wealth, as he said. Now in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us a question, a rhetorical question here. Do they not seek to understand the Qur'an, to reflect on it, to learn what is in it? The instruction for life is all there. The fulfillment of your purpose as a human being. It is the key to success. It is the pathway to salvation. It is the warnings and the glad tidings. It is the rituals and the history. The very healing for the hearts which we are all in need of. It is as though, in this ayah, it is as though the spiritual heart is a door with a lock on it. And if it is not unlocked, then what's behind that door cannot be accessed. If it's not unlocked, the heart is not going to be affected as much by Iman or the Quran or the signs, the ayat of Allah all around us and within us. And this is the reason that many people, they see the signs of God and yet they refuse to accept the truth. There's something spiritually wrong with the heart in that moment. It's also the reason that many Muslims know the truth. They know the signs of Allah and their hearts are not affected. This is a symptom of a deeper struggle and a deeper problem. People who see evidence upon evidence of truth and all they attempt to do is, their, is reason their way out of it, or maybe to justify it, maybe to ignore it, maybe to double down on it with arrogance. It is as though their hearts are partially blocked and spiritually locked. May Allah protect us and remove such locks from our hearts. One time, there was a man who was telling us a story about a property that he was trying to sell. It was an abandoned house for a long, long time. And there was a lot of wear and tear throughout this house. There were in some areas of the house, some things that were ruined, some things that were broken. So basically it was ruined in almost every part of the house. But the man was trying to sell it. And he's trying and trying and trying. And he said, nobody would purchase this property. He tried for years to sell this property and people would tell him very honestly, the price that he put on it was too high for such a ruined building. Now, generally, a ruined building ruins. A ruined building is symbolic when it comes to hadith and even when it comes to dream interpretation. It was reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the heart that has no Quran in it is like an abandoned, ruined house. May Allah protect us in our hearts. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, the famous companion who was also a scholar of the Qur'an, he said the house in which the Qur'an is not recited, think about your house, is like a run-down building, a run-down house that has no one to maintain it. A heart that does not contain any part of the Qur'an resembles an abandoned and ruined house. Why? It's because the Qur'an gives light to the heart, even in the darkest of times because it is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In addition to all of this, the Qur'an brings nur, light to its companion that protects them from the darkness of misguidance, being tempted with all the things that are around you or different types of deviation. And sometimes they are very gradual. This is similar and this is known uh, with the narration that we have about the Prophet sallallahu explaining the main thing that affects your behavior and your body, where the Prophet ﷺ says at the end of that hadith, there lies within the body a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the entire body is sound, meaning you're going to do the right things. If it is corrupted, then the entire body is corrupted. You're going to do the wrong things. What is it? Indeed, this piece that he's referring to, this part of the human body, is the heart. This is the heart we are talking about and trying to preserve. Think about your heart. If the heart is the most important deciding factor on the rest of your body and the behaviors that are linked to your heart, 
then it is only reasonable that the heart is protected and safeguarded from any kind of corruption or ruin. May Allah protect us all. So from the example of a ruined house, the wise and the righteous believers should put in so much effort to fill their hearts with the light and the beauty of the Qur'an. And there is a beautiful dua you can make as well. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa. O oh Allah, I ask you to protect me from knowledge that does not benefit me. Wa min qalbin la yakhsha. So you ask Allah to protect you from useless information, it's not beneficial, and from a heart that is not humbled. Wa min nafsin la tashba. And from a desire which is not satisfied. Wa min da'watin la yustajabu laha. And from a prayer, a dua, supplication which is not answered. This is a dua you can learn and implement every single day. And I'll leave you with this question. What dua are you making most this Ramadan or passionate about this Ramadan or throughout the year that will impact the state of your heart?